Um, like movies? Yeah, I like movies. Have you seen The Dark Knight? Yeah. Okay, so you know how like there's this character, right? Named Harvey Dent? Yeah. And you know what they call him, right? No, what do they call him? You don't? Okay, so so Harvey Dent, he's like, he's, he's usually called like Two-Faced, like in The Office. Oh, uh, he's, he's called Two-Faced, right? He's the one who's... Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So like, and then he had this quote thing, like, directed to Batman. It's like, oh, or is it Batman who said it? There's just this quote. There's awesome code in that movie. It's like, um, you either die a hero or like live long enough to see yourself become the villain, right? Yeah. So like, every then he's like both a hero and a villain essentially, right? Which is just, which is just like Mal, because he's a hero. He's a, he's like an actual he's a cool guy like politically, he's like a good leader. So that's hero wise. But then he got bad in the end. Did you watch the movie? Yes, I watched the movie. Yeah, so at the beginning, he's, like, really good, right? Yeah. Like, everyone loved him. But yeah. then the end, like, he turned bad. Yeah. Okay. So he was both a hero and a monster, okay, which yeah. is exactly like Mao. Oh, my God. Right? Wow. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay, so I think Mao is, like, well, in my opinion, I think Mao is more of a hero. Why? Because, like, okay, so um, he, in, like, 1940, no, 1949, right? Yeah, that's what coming yeah. Okay. So, um, prior to that, you know how like the um, there were warlords, right? Who like who would control the land. So the na the it's like the nationalists, yeah. Just the nationalists and then the communists, right? Yeah. And they worked together to like fight off the warlords, right? Yes. They did. Okay. So they they fought them off, and then everything is good, and then. Remember when in class we talked about like the enemy of my enemy is my friend? Yeah. Right. So both their enemies were the warlords, so they worked together. Okay? But then after the warlords were defeated, they like split up again and then they hated each other again. Yeah. And then suddenly the Japanese invaded Manchuria. Then they got back together. No, no, no. they didn't. Oh, okay. Like okay. No, well Mao wanted to get back together, they wanted to cooperate. Yeah. But then like the nationalists, like Chiang Kai Shek, he was just like, uh, okay, no, I don't want to work with you and like get rid of the Japanese. I'd rather just like, destroy you than destroy the Japanese. Oh, yeah, yeah, Which, like, yeah. Which doesn't yeah, make sense, yeah. right? Because yeah. I mean, like, here was Mao trying to like get rid of the, the foreign influence out of China, and then Chiang Kai Shek was just like, ah, uh, no. Just because you're communist, I hate you because you're communist and have to like go away. Yeah. Right? And like, I don't. I don't know why that's such a big deal. Well, I guess it is sort of, but like I just don't see why he's so like hostile with the idea of communism, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, like even the U.S. Well, it's his, it's a other party working against him. Like, why wouldn't he be? Hostile yeah, but like, what's him? so like communism is like tries to make everything equal, which is like a noble cause, right? Yeah. So how come? Chiang Kai-shek and like the U.S. now is still like pretty hostile towards like because communism. communism ideals go against their their beliefs. Like their wait, nationalist government was democratic. Hmm? Nationalist government was democratic. Were they? Something like that. I Anyways. just I just know they're not <laughs> communist. <laughs> and then they hated well, communism. The U.S. is democratic, and so democratic values value the freedom of, of expression and choice, right? But okay. communism completely like smushes that because the government decides all for the well being of the people. So I guess that just goes against like what at least what the US Yeah, but some people the don't know what's good for them. Well, you know? <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah. So well, But there could also be a corrupt government, so I don't know. <laughs> okay. <well>. Anyways <laughs> See, I'm just trying to see the good in that, because you should always see the good in people. Yeah. So even though like people don't really approve of communism, I mean, like Mao did a lot of great things for China, like for land reform. He like gave all of the air, he divided all the arable land, and he like gave three hectares like each family, and so that gave the, the peasants, especially the peasants, like more than enough to like make food and feed themselves. Yeah. And then um, to increase like manpower and like production, there was like collectives and no, first was cooperatives. 
and then collectives, and then communes. And if, okay, so communes, people would argue, is like what caused like the three bitter years of the Great Famine, the famine. right? But like that wasn't Mao's fault. Yeah, but, but he, just also, he also abolished private property. Hmm? He also abolished private property, property, so nothing belonged to the peasants by the end of the land. Oh, no, 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 but like, okay, so the peasants, they were, like, they had to meet a quota, right? Yeah. Yeah, but then, like, they they kept exceeding that quota, no, not exceeding it, they, they kept, like, making up, they would like, quota. they would fabricate all these numbers saying that, oh, yeah, we'll produce just, like, so-and-so tons of, like, grain, then they can't even meet that, so it's, like, not Mao's fault that there was a famine. You know what I mean? And then the communes thing, like he didn't it wasn't his idea. He just sort of read it off like a poster while on a train, like passing by. Oh. He was gonna he was gonna vi like visit villages, right? Because like he cared about the people, so he wanted to see like how things were going, so he was gonna visit the village. And then he saw a poster that says communes are good. And he read it off. And then this reporter just like wrote down his words and published it in an article in the newspaper the next day. So everyone's like, Oh my god, Mao said this, it must be good. Yeah, and so yeah. they formed the communes. Yeah. And then yeah, and then he also did the social reform thing. Um, he didn't want there to be classes, so he, when he realized that the Communist Party itself was turning into some elite, like its own elite, which is like not what he intended to do, he like had the Hundred Flowers campaign. With the criticism. Yeah, which is like, you know, not, okay, like, admittedly it may not have been like the best the idea. Best idea but you know, there's the thought of like still maintaining the equality, yeah. right? Which is, you know, he, he actually tried to make China more egalitarian, is that it? Yeah, it kind of, but it also kind of seems like he didn't want anybody to rise above him. Like he wanted to be like the key person in the government of China. So kind of he was like the elite. Well, not necessarily. I mean, like, he just didn't want, like, his own, like, in the In the 100, 100 Flowers campaign, did they criticize Mao? As yeah, well? they criticized Mao. Well, like, just them individually, maybe not, like, out loud. But remember, like, there was this one lady who was, like, um, she was accused of being, like, a rightist, right? But then yeah. she was just like, how can you call me a rightist when, like, Mao himself ordered this? Oh, right? yeah. 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 So, like... I mean, I guess the right is criticized Mao. Seems like he's just way. trying to fool everybody. What? Cause like, <laughs> <laughs> cause, okay, why? Because first he like, he's like, I don't want anybody to be like an elite class, so I'll let the citizens of China criticize the party members. And then after they criticize the party members, he's like, oh my god, you're arrested for committing the crimes of being a right. Oh, it's well, like. What the hell? You just told me to do this. Why are you tricking me? I don't know. I guess he's trying to make like both sides happy. He's he's trying. At least he tried. And like, okay, this is just like the whole like monster versus hero thing, right? Yeah. It's just like it just depends on like what you choose to see in him. And like that. Okay, so basically, like when I think of Mal, um, I remember when. Mr. Burrell, which is like, oh yeah, so who does Mao like remind you of, like, yeah, which yeah. dynasty? And I, yeah. like, you know how I immediately thought of, like, Chin? Yeah. Like, Chin Chi Huangdi, right? Yeah. Okay, so, like, they're both similar in, like, tons of ways. Like, one, um, they, they're, like, the rise. So if you look at the waves, like, they're, like, yes. the rise of, like, the new waves. Yeah, so, like, Chin rose from, like, after the period of disunity, right? That was Warring States. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, it's yeah. after Warring States. Warring States, Warring States, not period of the Okay, <laughs> Beginning well. of wave two. Yeah, okay, Warring States. And then, um, and then Mao, he rose up after, like, the Civil War. And then, yeah. The Republic of China. And then the foreign, like, invasions and stuff. So, right? Yeah. Yeah, and then second, um, they created, I guess, new political systems, like Chin created legalism, which is like the whole crime and punishment thing, yeah. and Mao created, well not really instituted created, but like it's communism. instituted, okay, yeah. better word, and um, and like 
They're both, okay, so they're both pretty much authoritarian, right? Yeah. Like regimes. And then um, they both intellect, um, persecute, uh, persecuted intellectuals. Okay, this is about the good and bad sides of them, right? So, um, what did Mao do? Mao? He burned books. Yeah, Mao burned books, like the four old, right? Or is that different? But, like, Mao actually, he, like, ex, no, he arrested and, like, beaded all, like, intellectual um, threats, I guess, mm -hmm. to his party. And then Qin Shi Huangdi burned scholars alive. And, like, he, and, like, actually, Qin Shi Huangdi killed a lot of people. Yeah. Like, remember when he buried, like, those workers and convicts into the Great Wall, which, like, took 15 years to build, right? And then another um, similarity is their extravagant tombs. Like Mao has like the mausoleum. I, I've actually yeah, yeah, yeah. seen it. It's like right in the middle of Tiananmen Square. Yeah, and Qin Shi Huangdi has the yeah, terracotta the, warriors. Yeah, which is like individualized, right? Every single one of them looked different. Yeah, they were and then the he has the he had that pyramid thing. It's like a ground. pyramid on the ground. Like yeah. Underground hill or and then, like, inside would be, like, servants and concubines that had to die with him. Yeah, with the rivers and rivers of mercury, mercury. whatever. Yeah, like, Chin, Chin Huangdi was, like, paranoid, right? Yeah. He was, like, extremely paranoid. He was, like, scared of death. So, like, he hired all these alchemists to uh, create the create elixir of life, life. <laughs> which they thought was mercury because it was, like, liquid metal. Yeah. Right, but then, silver. like, huh? Good silver. Oh yeah, quick silver. And then it ended up killing him, because yeah, yeah. Oh, and remember when Chen Chuangyi died during the imperial, an imperial tour? Yeah. And then they had to like carry a wagon full of dead fish just to, like hide the smell of his yeah. decaying body. Um, well, like I don't know if like any of that is true. Well, we we don't know for sure if any of that is true, because. Like what we know about Chen Chen Huangdi is based off what Sima Qian wrote for wrote, Wu Di. Wrote in the records of the Grand Historian. So it's called, right? Which is like, yeah. So he wrote it for Emperor Wu Di of the Han Dynasty. Yeah, so it's biased. And so it's like biased, right? Well, you would think it's biased because the Han overthrew the Qin. Yeah. But then Wu Di ordered Sima Qian to be castrated. So why would Sima Qian be like, in favor of him. Yeah. yeah. Plus, like, Sima Chen wanted to, like, show filial piety for his father because his father wanted to, like, finish an accurate history of China. Oh, speaking about, like, filial piety, I'll, I have a story to tell you. Okay, so while I was making my scroll, right, I was, like, laid it, laid it out in my living room, and then my brother, you know how he's back? Okay, so he comes back, and he takes Chinese, like, right, like language and culture, in, in college, so he comes back and he like wonders what I'm doing, right? And it's like, oh, it's just like this really big timeline of like Chinese history. And then he saw me writing down like or making a box around filial piety. And he was like, oh, I have a story to tell you about filial piety. Okay, so my Chinese teacher, she was just telling us about her life and how like how she grew up. Yeah, she was like when she was a little girl, she had a dog, and then she had to go live with her grandparents. And then so okay, her grandmother eats dog. Ew. So like when. She and her family moved to her grandmother's place. <laughs> like, well, her grandmother asked her dad to cook the dog. Ew. And it's like, because of filial piety, like, his dad, like, I mean, her dad couldn't really say no to his mom, right? So, she lost her dog. Yeah, that's gross. Kind of. Especially since I have a dog, like, my brother, like, yeah. <laughs> it's a good thing we're not Chinese, but, you know, it's a different story. I mean, irregardless, okay, so Qin, Shi Huangdi, and Mao, like, the whole monster versus hero thing, like, that's debatable, but you can't, like, really deny that they're, like, both really great people. Right? Yeah, yeah, because yeah. Mao led China to prosperity. Yeah, and so did, and, well, basically both of them united China, which is, like, a pretty big country, yeah. right? So. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, awesome.